Hey guys, I'm Boot. We're in New Jersey, and today I'm making this video because I'm using Mac on my PC. But it's AMD. Now, Mac has been around for years and years now. Um, probably, you know, the biggest race is between Mac and Windows right now. Uh, Windows being, you know, most of the market share, while Mac has some great options for their operating system and their performance is pretty fantastic. But the problem is, is that when you buy a Mac, you're buying a very, very expensive piece of equipment. Now I use mine for video production and even sometimes music production and audio engineering and things like that. Uh, along with doing that, I also do a lot of you know, making uh, USBs to boot, like test different operating systems and all kinds of things. Uh, the question that burned in my mind was, do I want to pay uh, $1,400 to fifteen or $1,600 for a MacBook or do I want to just keep a Windows computer? And for me, that step was trying to use Mac on my PC. And that was able to be done for a long amount of time using uh, a bootloader called Clover. Or um, there was another one before that I can't remember the name of it. It's been so long since I tried to do it. Now, I am a bit of a tech enthusiast. Uh, I have dabbled in programming. And I am extremely, extremely... Uh, aware of what it takes to make this happen. Uh, the question is, is does it work? I mean, for years, it's only been available with Intel systems with certain hardware. And for me to just have built this setup, I paid $400 uh, last year for my birthday. It was a, a present given to me so I could build a new computer when I was uh, having trouble with my old one. And this has really been something that I've been struggling with recently, is getting a MacBook or not getting a MacBook. And so what I did was I learned a little bit more about some of the bootloaders. And I also had been trying to use supposedly bootable Mac OS images. And I'm not used to a lot of the formats because Mac is a fickle mistress uh, if you're coming from Windows. You don't know which ends up. Now, there are some things I'll go over in the video um, when I show you on screen, but basically I lucked my way into this Ryzentosh. I mean, uh, a lot of people have called it a Hackintosh for years, but using AMD Ryzen processor and an AMD video card has been unheard of in the, uh, in the Hackintosh world for years. It's been mainly a Intel-based certain options. This was just what I had, and I, to be able to do this and luck my way into it was like a beautiful thing for me. But I also took a look at some of the videos online, and there is a guy who I'll, uh, I'll leave his name down here, um, but he has a great YouTube channel. He was using uh, Hackintosh with Intel for a while, and then he went over to Ryzentosh probably, I think, three or four months ago. And he has some phenomenal information about the different bootloaders and I never even thought about it until after I saw his videos that what you get is actually a bootloader and you have to install kexts to it which are drivers in the Windows sense. Basically if you don't have a configuration file with all these things listed in in the right way you're boned and you can't boot up your operating system. Luckily I just managed to stumble my way into this and I had a, uh, a Mac uh, Catalina distribution, which is not the newest distribution. As you can see, I've got this little update tab here, and I just keep snoozing it because on off Ryzentosh, I'm not sure how to do updates yet. I do realize that you have to update the bootloader with new files and new information in the configuration file. I do realize that there are some things that are going to be tricky upgrading a Hackintosh, basically. And, uh, but... You know, for the most part, I want to talk a little bit about my experience with the Ryzentosh here. Uh, I've only been messing with it for probably about a week, but I just wanted to let you guys know it is absolutely possible. And I'll go over some of the specs and information along the video. So let's just get to it.
Okay guys, so this is my Mac setup. Um, right now I have some programs that I need to get rid of. Um, whenever you install a program, it's real weird. It's a, uh, well, I'll show you. So basically, let me go about this Mac, and you're gonna see um, it's an iMac Pro 2017 is what it says it is. Uh, Mac OS Catalina 10.15.2. Uh, I think they're up to 10.15.4 or 10.15.7 right now. So I keep getting, um, let me show you real quick. When I turn off my do not disturb, I get this updates available. Do you want to restart and install these updates? Unfortunately, I don't want to restart it and install updates. So I'm just going to hit do not disturb. Um, I keep having to do that every time I get on, but it is what it is. Uh, this thing has a 3.6 gigahertz Ryzen 2600X processor in it which has been fantastic for the last year I've been using it. But this reads it as an Intel or Core i5. The memory is 16 gigabytes uh, at 300 megahertz, DDR4 RAM. Um, the startup disk is called Mac OS, which it's just my main Mac disk, uh, my main Mac um, hard drive. And if you can hear it, that is my, I'm not sure if that's my processor or if that is my video card, making all kinds of noise. I think it's my video card. It tends to do that though when it's using a lot of power. Uh, I don't understand why it's using a lot of power because the processor isn't really going that crazy. The memory isn't really going that crazy. I've got 16 gigs of memory. Uh, I do have the Radeon RX 460, which has four gigs of DDR4, I believe, or DDR3. I'm, I'm unsure at this time, but I've been using this card for like two years and it's been a great video card. Uh, I really haven't had the need to upgrade as of yet, but I'm getting more into gaming and stuff. So I really feel that, you know, it would really help my video editing and stuff like that to get a better video card. But that's a future update in a later episode of whatever the heck this is. Anyways, let me go ahead and uh, just close this up. Now, there is a uh, boot disk, and this is the USB disk on my computer right now. And it's got all the open core software and stuff uh, in the EFI folder. I have my open core and my boot. I want to say that I added some files from a Clover boot loader and brought them into here into the texts because I had to, um, you know, just bring them in. I have some of them in here that are not listed on the config list, but I did manually have to like push them through using Hacken tool to um, bring in a couple of extra texts here, like this unsupported one. Uh, that's for the um, internet and the Wi-Fi, and um, that is for my Edimax N150. It's an EW7811UN, looks like this. And I originally got this for the Raspberry Pi, but I really never used it. You have to put these kecks together, and I just kind of dumb lucked my way into it. But the problem I didn't understand was I was using a bunch of uh, DMG, which is basically a disk image for Mac, uh, kind of like an ISO if you are a Windows user. So anyways, let me go ahead and close that down. Uh, and then this Mac OS is a USB hot swappable hard drive setup that I have going where I just stuck in the hard drive and it's good to go. Uh, downloaded stuff. Unfortunately, when you download things, um, it goes into the downloads folder, and right now all you can see is open in Finder. There's nothing in the downloads folder because I moved it over to downloaded stuff, which in here I have my hack and tool stuff, I have the um, other texts, some lock screen stuff. I was trying to do some screensaver stuff, and then I found out one of the crucial things about a Ryzen Tosh is that you can't let it go to sleep. If it goes to sleep and the disk, you know, goes to sleep and the screen goes to sleep, you'll never get it back and you just have to hard reboot. Um, and of course, that lies with some other challenges as well. Uh, I do have the Ryzen Tosh uh, updated files here, which I got. Um, that was a big thing because it had some of the other texts that I needed to come back to this. It's a little bit weird to get used to using the Finder instead of the Windows Explorer that I'm so used to, but 
all in all, it all worked out really nicely. I have some packages here. I have some DMGs, which are basically, it's kind of like an image file, but you can mount it just by clicking on it. It unzips, it unmounts, and it comes up on your desktop. And the easiest thing about installing new software is, it's as easy as dragging and dropping to the application folder. Everything's done in the background in a really clean and minimalistic way. Unlike Windows, which you have to go through this whole rigmarole of setting things up, other things need to be added, other dependencies and things like that. And so it's just a big pain in the ass. That's where this differs, and that's the thing I like about Mac OS. Moving on from that, let me go back um, to these two hard drives here are three terabyte hard drives. They are basically my Windows backup stuff. So anything that I have saved, I saved into these two big hard drives. Uh, one of them has my Windows programs on it. Uh, the other one has my backups, my archives, I call it. Uh, and I put that on the newest hard drive I got because the old hard drive I've been using for close to a year and I didn't want to risk uh, losing that hard drive and losing all that information because this is basically archives of archives of archives that I've had these files for like 10 or more years. Some of them going back to when I used to play in a band and we had our studio stuff. And then even when I moved to Tennessee, I was doing a recording with a pastor there who she wanted to put together like a, a little demo album and that's what we did and so i have all those files saved all the backing tracks all the you know information through uh fruity loops which i used the only problem is is that i cannot use my version of fruity loops in mac os so i'm gonna have to see if i can download that but i do have a uh, garage band which is pretty cool uh, i haven't finished downloading some of the stuff for that uh, as far as video editing, I use Wondershare Filmora 9, which they just updated it, and it's a little bit hinky on Windows. And when I say hinky, I mean, um, you know, having to pre-render your clips. Uh, I've had a lot of crashing with it. They just did a recent update where it was supposed to give better support to the GPU for, um, you know, for rendering and for exporting videos, or what I call the mix down. And by the time it does all that, you end up waiting longer than the video is long. So I did a uh, 10 minute video, maybe a little bit longer with Ali last week, where it was a Fortnite video and it literally took me 16 to 18 minutes to render the video. So I was not a happy camper at that point and I did not like the update. I have not gotten to use it yet in Mac. Uh, aside from, you know, just kind of opening projects, trying things out, and just moving things around and trying to figure out like trying to keep all my files together but separated between Mac and Windows so that you know when the time comes I'll have already done those videos those things will still be put away but you know like this project here uh, sorry I have to block it out but I'm gonna open the project and it's gonna show me in the middle here so I'm gonna skip over ahead of this this video is like 31 minutes before I cut it. But as you can see, um, let me go ahead and make this full screen here. If you double click on the top, it's full screen. Where there's the menu usually, it's actually up in the very top here, which is a little bit weird. And sometimes my mouse just does that. I don't know if you saw that, but the mouse just went whoop and got real big and then real small. Sometimes that happens and it weirds me out. I can hear my video processor going ape shit right now, but what I can say about the Mac version of this program is it's been fantastic. Uh, I can actually scroll back and forth. Oh no, I'm actually just making it bigger and smaller. <laughs> um, I can, well, let me go ahead and play a little bit. So let me zoom back out because it's a little bit just crazy. But as you can see, I can grab this and just drag and scrub through my footage all I want, which is beautiful. And also watching it, I can put it in full scale preview and it runs phenomenally, phenomenally. As you can see there, it's working beautifully. And um, I, unfortunately the controls are a little bit different. I did have macro keys set up on Windows so I could just use my number pad as my macro keys. This is a little bit different. I notice 
when I do shortcuts, let me go ahead. Oh, see, I keep activating the launcher by accident. I'm going to close this out. Sorry, that project is blocked. But as you can see, you know, I've got my video projects set up right here. I've got my downloaded stuff over here. All of the apps actually work really well, except for FaceTime and Messages. I have problems with those on here, but I've actually heard regular Macs have those problems too. So it's not a surprise in any capacity that, you know, I would have some issue there. Um, maybe after I figure out how to update this thing, you know, it'll be different. Uh, I was able to download Epic Games Launcher and for some reason, I'm not going to launch it here because I do have a lot of issues with it. Uh, my internet is running off a wireless dongle, which took me forever to figure out how to get that to work. I don't have a LAN connection upstairs. I'm working on that, getting my Wi-Fi set up. But I have to use a wireless dongle for internet. And so I had to find software for that. And luckily, I was able to get into the vanilla open core information sheet and the guide. And I'll tell you what, go over to the open core guide if you're trying and trying. Go there because there's a lot of good information from there. And there's a lot of people who really worked hard on all these texts and, and did their research and did their R&D and, you know, all that just to make this work. And I applaud these guys because they are so hard working at this stuff. And they're enthusiasts. They don't get paid to do this. They do it out of the kindness of their hearts and, you know, the ability to progress software and hardware integration into Hackintosh and Ryzentosh. So thank you guys because that is amazing. Uh, the fact that I can even use this is so amazing. I do have some issues with the sound um, devices on this. I can't really use the sound card um, with volume. As you can see right now, I'm using a third party um, app to use sound and be able to control the volume of it. But I use this, um, my monitor sound through HDMI and it works great if I want to be really loud or if I want to see something really loud. So luckily I'm able to use uh, YouTube videos and turn them down or my video editing software, I can turn down the volume on that or I can just go for headphones and then I have volume control. So there's that. Um, like I said, I'm a noob and I'm still trying to figure it out but I'm getting there slowly but surely. Uh, amazingly, the app store works really well. Uh, there are some apps I'm not used to because I use an iPhone uh, I was hoping that those apps would kind of carry over, but there's a little bit of difference here. I mean, like I said, I'm able to use GarageBand. I'm able to use uh, iMovie, which is great. I actually downloaded that. Uh, iMovie is on here. So I ended up going with OBS, but Recorded had me download that third-party uh, sound driver thing. Uh, it's called Soundflower. So it has a 64-channel and a 2-channel, it looks like. So... I have no idea. I haven't really messed with it at all, but this is like my first impressions of this system is like, holy crap. Now there is a way where you can get the Mac OS disc to boot up without this boot disc. Um, and you can use Hackintosh or hack and tool to install texts and make it work. But I don't really see the need to do that because I'm just experimenting right now. And I don't want to bork my own system. So I'm not going to do that until I actually know how to do that. And how am I going to learn how to do that? Testing. Over and over again. You know, sometimes you have to work days and days and days to get something right. And once you get that thing right, all the stars align and everything is great. That's where I'm at right now. Because I have the USB drive and I have the USB hot swappable drive. I can also switch this back and load it back into Windows, which is great. Okay guys, so I'm up to this very point in the video with editing and it's really coming along. It's a little bit long of a video and I'm sorry for that, but I do have some news to report. So I was going to export it at this point just to see what the time was. Unfortunately, I bought the Windows version and not the Mac version, so I will have a giant watermark across my screen. So I'm not going to render this in Mac. I would have loved to see what the performance was like, but I've been able to see the performance uh, as of editing. And the performance is pretty decent. I don't have too many 
issues or hang-ups with it, aside from when you're changing between the top media and transitions and things like that, you get that little spinning beach ball deal. And, you know, it is what it is. It's okay. I'm not totally mad about it. I'm not, you know, happy about it, but it worked. And the other thing I didn't like was that the keyboard shortcuts on Mac are a little different than on Windows. Uh, on Mac, you use the Windows key and whatever it is to do the shortcut keys. On Windows, it's control and whatever the key is. But the keys are different in Macs for the shortcuts on here. And I don't know yet how to create macro keys for this yet. But I will figure it out and hopefully then I will update you guys with a, uh, you know, another video. But this one has been long enough so I'm just going to cut it here. I'm going to switch back to Windows, render it, and I hope you guys liked it. Leave me a comment down below with what you guys want to see me do next with the Ryzentosh or if you want to see how I made the Ryzentosh uh, come to life. Let me know and I'll make that video. Thank you guys for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Anyways, that's it. I'll see you next time.